Hello YouTube, this is Umils03. So now we're on to lesson nine in the Python tutorial and we've already introduced a lot of really good concepts or really a lot of important fundamental topics for writing successful Python programs. In the last video, we studied something called a list and we said a list is basically a data structure which is capable of holding multiple elements. And we said Python lists are pretty sweet and convenient because you actually don't need to have all the elements be the same data type and we're talking about a resizable list. So as depending on how much programming experience you have from, um, from the past, a Python list would function more like a, an array list in Java than a traditional array. But the syntax might look a little bit more like a traditional array because of the square brackets. So let's review what we have from last time. Remember that we can go ahead and create a list by passing in elements in square brackets. And so we said, if we have my list, equals 353 three. and then if we say print my list of two this would grab the element at index position two and we said that uh, we said that index positions in most programming languages start at zero so here if you're looking at index position two it's not going to be the five it's actually going to be the second three at the end of the list and that's indeed what we see there and then of course we should be comfortable printing all the elements in the list too so now if we go ahead and run this code it just prints out the list. And then we said that we can have different data types in it too. So if we say another list, then we could have a 5.2 and then we could have a false and then another false and then a hey and then a two and then a sup and then a 1.5, right? And then we could go ahead and print the, uh, the items in that list, right? So now if we go ahead and say print another list, then we would go ahead and take a look at that, right? So now what we would do is we would go ahead and run it and we would just get those values, right? And we said that the about any evaluations that would happen um, would be seen here, right? So instead of saying H E Y, what if we just concatenated H E with Y? So then it would be the same thing, but I just want to show you. And then instead of two, we'll do 20 minus 18. And instead of 1.5, we'll do about do three over two. And then instead of false, we'll do not true. And then instead of false here, we'll do true and false, right? And so you can see these are all gonna be equivalent. They're gonna evaluate the exact same way. So if you watch the console output between right now and then two seconds from now, it's not really gonna change because all those items would evaluate and then you would see the results of those expressions. And then we said, we can also have a list of lists. So you could basically have a nested list, which is sort of like a matrix, right? Or you could basically have different arrays, right? So you could say apple and orange, right? Maybe you have a list of fruits and then you have another list of months or something so you could say april and october right and then you have another list of just random integers so maybe you say three two and nine and these lists don't have to have the same number of elements in them right so essentially we have two lists in this nested list with two elements in them and one list in this nested list with three elements in it and that's not an issue but you'd have to go ahead and index them in the right way so now you could do nested list and then now you'd need to specify which list you want to be looking in, which elements within this nested list. And so then if you're going to look at the 329, you would say nested list of two. And then depending on which of those three numbers you would want, you would either pass in zero, one, or two. So if you say nested list of two, zero, it would go into this particular sub list, right? And then it would go into this particular element. So it would say three. And then if we go ahead and run it, that's exactly what we see there. So hopefully that's clear to you. And then I think the last thing we were talking about, we were also talking about concatenating, right? So we were also talking about concatenating two lists together. So if you say list one equals three, two, three, and then you say list two equals eight, nine, four. If you add the two lists, it doesn't add the elements piecewise. It doesn't do three plus eight, two plus nine, three plus four. It's literally a concatenation of the two lists. So what this does, what this does is it forms another list with all elements from list one and all elements from list two. Okay, so hopefully that's clear to you what's going on here. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and press run. And so then you would go ahead and get all six elements, right? And then we said also, what happens if you multiply a list by an end? So now if you say, what if you do five times list one? Well, then you would get three, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, three. And that's exactly the 15 numbers that you see there um, printed. So that's basically what's going on with that. And then I think we're basically ready for new content except for the in, right? So then if, what if you say at this point, what if you say at this point, what if you say print five minus two in list one? So then this would check to see if there's at least one occurrence of three in list one. So then if you go ahead and run this, 
it will go ahead and say true. But what if you say print of 10 minus seven in list one and, and then you combine that with another Boolean about list two, that's not in, not true. So what if you say 10 minus one, not in list two? Let's think about what this line of code would do. We're, com we're combining two Booleans with an and, and so we're gonna need both of them to be true in order for us to print true. And if either, of the, either one of them is false, we're gonna print false. So this one says 10 minus seven in list one. Do we have at least one occurrence of the number three in list one? Yes. But then the next one says 10 minus one, not in list two. Is nine not in list two? No, it is in list two. So now if you go ahead and run this combined Boolean expression, you go ahead and see the false there. And we said that we can either put not immediately before the in, or our Boolean can just be element in list and then put the not around that entire Boolean. And then if you had, what if you have both of them? What if you said and not 10 minus one, not in list? Well, this would just be equivalent to seeing whether nine is in list two. And now since both of those Booleans are true, we would go ahead and print true. So hopefully you understand sort of the mechanisms there and what we got going on with that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna learn some different methods for dealing with lists. We're gonna learn some different operations that we can have. So what we're already familiar with, already familiar with creating lists, we know what an empty list is, we can concatenate lists, we can change elements in a list, right? I think that's the only other thing we haven't talked about um, you know, since last video is what if you said y equals nine, one, nine, one, nine, and then what if you wanted to say y of two is equal to y of zero minus y of three? And then what if you wanted to say print y of two? What would this print? Well, y of two is gonna be reassigned to the elements at index position zero minus the elements at index position three. So here basically it would be reassigned to nine minus one, which is eight. And so now if you print the elements at index position nine, it's not gonna be not, at index position two, it's not gonna be nine anymore, it's gonna be eight. So now if you go ahead and run it, that's why we see the eight there. So we basically are just saying that you can, all, you can always redefine a particular element at an index position. You just say list of index position equals, and then whatever you wanna replace it with. And then that old information is gone, right? So whatever you had at that index position previously, unless you save it to a variable or something, that information is gonna be gone. So odds are, if you're changing an element in a list, hopefully you're changing it from the incorrect element to the correct element, if that makes sense. We can also have something called an append. And so what an append, the append command will add an element to the end of an array, to the end of a list, okay? So basically if you have, if you have items or something, and then you basically say soccer, okay? And then basketball, and then hockey, and then tennis, okay? So we just have a couple of sports here. And then what we're gonna say, what we're gonna say is we're gonna say items.append of golf, okay? And so what this would do is it would basically, uh, what's the issue here? So it's gonna give us a pet. Uh, so it says the list creation could be rewritten as a list literal. Let's see what it wants to do with that. Um, so I don't really know why it gave a pep thing here. So we can just try to ignore that. I guess maybe it's having an issue with too many spaces or something like that. But if you have these items in a list, right? And then you just go ahead and, um, I'm just gonna try to remove this pep thing because it's pretty annoying. Um, so then what we will do, let's just disable inspection, okay? So sometimes what you can do is if you don't want to in inspect particular pep things like that, you can try to look at drop down menus and look for a word that says like, ignore errors like this or disable inspection because there's really no issue with the code that I'm writing here. And what they were suggesting I thought was actually making the code a little less readable. So sometimes pep can be helpful, but other times it's a pain in the ass. So anyway, what I was trying to say is that if you have an existing list, right, we have elements in this list, we created a list with four string elements in it, right, and they all happen to be the same data type just by coincidence, but you have to remember that unlike in Java, we can have different data types, right, and we saw different data types, you can have a list of lists, you can have a list with some lists in it and some ints in it, right, so it's up to you. But this would do items append of golf. And so now if we go ahead and print items, let's figure out what items now exist in the list. And so now we get soccer, basketball, hockey, tennis, golf. And one of the things we said is that even if you are going to put in the strings into a list with double quotes, what you're gonna see on the console output is that the strings are actually gonna appear with single quotes. It's just an observation that 
that I made uh, in the past. And so I wanted to share it with you, but it doesn't really make a difference, right? So now if you go ahead and replace the hockey here and you just have single quotes, then you would get the exact same output down here. You get the exact same thing. So the append method simply adds an element to the end of the list, right? So if you say list dot append of X, okay, adds X to the end of list, right? And that's really not that hard to understand. We can also have something called length of list. So for what we would do is we would say length of list, um, returns an integer representing the number of elements currently in the list. So now if you, what if you say print len of items, len of items, length of items, okay? So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and press run main and it tells you that there are five elements in it because there were four elements at the time of list creation. But then when we called the append method, it added one to the number of elements, so then it would be five. What we can also do is we can also insert an element at a particular index position. So if you watch the Java videos or if you're familiar with Java programming, you know that the ArrayList class has a method called, I think it's called add, right? And it accepts two arguments. And the first one is an index position where you wanna stick a particular element. And the second argument to the function is the particular element that you wanna stick at that first, at that index position, right? So here's what I mean by that. We basically have a we basically have a list right here, right? And so we have soccer, basketball, hockey, tennis, and golf. What if I want to add an element to the beginning of the list? So what if I want to add swimming to the beginning of the list? What you're gonna do is you're gonna say that list dot add of x y, or you could say you know an index position like n and x adds element x to index position n for the items at index position N or further to the right. So all later in the list, the item that was at index position N, what happens to it? They all scoot one index position to the right. Okay, so for example, if you started with, you know, soccer, basketball, hockey, tennis, and golf, the goal is gonna be to add swimming at the beginning. So we were gonna wanna have swimming, soccer, basketball, hockey, tennis, and golf. And so in order to do that, you need to say items dot add of zero and swimming. Okay, and so this would add uh, swimming to index position zero and all elements after index position zero are scooted, are scooted one to the right. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And then we can go ahead and print items and we're just gonna delete line four here because we don't wanna print items before we add swimming. We wanna see the effects of this add method on our list. So now if we go ahead and run main.py, uh, there's an issue here. So it's not going to be add. It's actually going to be called insert. My bad here. So it's actually going to be list.insert. Okay. So it's going to be, I was confusing it with the Java documentation, but it's going to be list.insert of NX. And you need to specify again, two arguments. The first one is the index position where you want to insert a new element. And the second one is the new element that you're inserting, right? And again, it doesn't really matter what data type it is. So now if you go ahead and run this code, and then you go ahead and get the swimming there. So remember list of ins list dot insert of n and x, okay? So then hopefully that makes sense to you and that's what we have going on here, right? And then you could have added another, you could have added another one, right? So then this is what the list looks like if you just insert swimming, but then what if we want something before tennis, right? So then if you look at the index position of tennis, it used to be at index position three, but now it's at index position four but let's say that we want something else at index position four. What if we want rugby? So then if we're gonna say items.insert of four, and then we're gonna say RUG concatenated with BY. Okay, and so now it's gonna put rugby in between hockey and tennis. And then if you run the code, now you get rugby in between hockey and tennis, just like we said. So that's essentially what we have going on here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the index method. Okay, so what happens is, what happens is for a particular list, list.index of x returns the index position of the first occurrence of x within list. So let's say you wanna know the index position of a particular element within this sports list, right? So this is the list that we had most recently, right? We added golf to the end and then we added swimming and rugby you know, to other positions within the list. We sort of inserted them in at different places. So now what if we wanna go ahead and find the index position of the first occurrence of the word basketball, which we're expecting to be index position two because it was originally index position one, but then when swimming was inserted at the beginning of the list, the index position of basketball changed from one to two. 
So now if you go ahead and say uh, print items.index of basketball, then hopefully we're gonna see the two there. So now if you go ahead and run it, you get a two. What if you try to ask for the index position of an item that doesn't exist within the list? So what if you say items.index of egg, and we can go ahead and run that and it actually throws a runtime error. So this is a difference between Java and Python, right? So then if you were talking about, you know, if you were talking about um, for an array list, the index of method in Java returns negative one if an element does not exist within the list. But then in Python, uh, for a list, the index method, uh, you know, throws an error uh, if the element does not exist within the list. So just another, another compare and contrast thing to do, but hopefully you at least understand how that method works, and that's called the index method, okay? And then we can also think about the maximum or the minimum elements in a maximum or minimum element in a list. Okay, so if you have a list of just numbers or just strings, you can use max of list or min of list to figure out the maximum or minimum items in the list or which items would appear, you know, first or last in the dictionary. So this would be the greatest or smallest, I guess, lexicographical value. So let me show you what I mean by that. We're gonna have basically two more lists. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say A equals, and then I'm gonna go ahead and say 5, 2, 8, 82, 73, 1, uh, 14, 61, 53. And so then I'm gonna go ahead and say B equals, and then A, S, uh, R, Z, Y. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and say print. Basically, I'm gonna do min of A times max of B. Okay, min of A times max of B. So here's what's gonna happen. It's gonna look for the minimum element in the list A, and that's gonna be one, right? So let's go ahead and make it, let's make the minimum element two. Okay, so we turn that one into a 60. And then it's also gonna look for the last element that would appear in the dictionary for list B. So then you'd be talking about a Z. So we would say that A is the minimum element lexicographically in the list B, and Z is the maximum element lexicographically in the list B. Okay, so hopefully you can understand, and we kind of saw that with Booleans, right? Where we said if one string is less than another string. So here A is basically the smallest string, and Z is the largest string. So now if you go ahead and run this code, it's still having an issue with the eggs thing, so let's take that out. But now if you go ahead and run it, you get two Zs because it's the minimum value of A with the maximum value of Z. What if you take out the Z and you replace it with an E? Well, now Y is the maximum value. What if you take out the two and you replace it with a seven? Well, now you're gonna get, seven, you're gonna get five Ys, right? Because now five is the minimum value. So hopefully the maximum and minimum makes sense to you. And then we can also count the number of, we can also count the number of elements in a list. So if you say print, if you say print of a dot count of seven, it would return the number of sevens in the list. So then you would go ahead and get one, but then if you stick in another seven, you would go ahead and get two. If the item like 91 doesn't exist in the list, you would go ahead and get zero. We can also go ahead and think about the remove method. So now if we go ahead and say a dot remove of seven, and then we go ahead and say system, we say print of a of one. Now seven is not at index position one anymore. Now it's eight. So now we remove that element from the list and we see eight. So that's the remove method. And then we saw the count method, which counts the number of occurrences of an element within a particular list. And then we also have a reverse method. And so basically for a list, uh, list.reverse uh, returns another list with uh, the index positions swapped. So now if you say list equals three, two, three, nine, and then you're gonna say, maybe we already called it that, but if we saw cup, it would just be cup.reverse, okay? So it doesn't return anything. You just call cup.reverse, and then you would go ahead and see, and then go ahead and print cup, and it would print the elements reverse order. So hopefully that was interesting, and we'll continue in the next video. From umilso 3 thanks for watching, and please subscribe.